This is the UDP 800 Ultra HD 4K Blu-ray player. We're going to open it up, check out what's inside, and then I'm going to do some direct comparisons to my Oppo UDP 203 to see if this is a worthy successor. And then in a future video, I'm going to give you a full review of the UDP 800. Let's unbox. All right, shout out to Magnetar for shipping this to me for review. It took a long time, no fault of Magnetar, but I am really excited. There's been a lot of hype around this and it's gonna be interesting to see how this compares to Oppo because I'm pretty sure that the same people or designers, engineers that made the Oppo also had a hand in this as well. So when we open it up, you get this nice kind of banner and it gives you some specs. You've got some really high quality styrofoam, styrofoam with the Magnetar logo on it. That's a nice touch. And then on the inside, we get a manual. All right, so this thing is actually pretty hefty. Like it's, I wanna say it's about 17 or 18 pounds. I'll put the exact specs up on the screen, but you get this nice velvet color or a velvet case, black velvet, and then it's got some Velcro on it, but really nice touch. This is also similar to how Oppo players came. It came in an actual bag, but this comes in, you know, in a Velcro bag. So in the box, we also get our remote. Very nice, pretty hefty remote. And then we get our power cable. All right, let's check out this Blu-ray player. Again, this thing is pretty heavy for what you get. I want to say it's even heavier than my Oppo UDP 203. So there it is, the Magnetar UDP 800 Ultra HD 4K Blu-ray player. All right, so on the front, we have our brushed aluminum. We have two colors. We have like a silver on the top. And on the bottom half, we have kind of like a darker grayish color. But if we look on the left-hand corner, up at the top, we have our Magnetar logo. And then below that, at the very bottom, we have our U well, one USB port. And then in the middle, we have our LCD screen. And underneath that, we have our tray for the 4K Blu-rays, which will open and close, and you can put your Blu-rays in there. And then next to that, we have our eject button play pause, stop, skip back, skip forward, and our power button. And then on the back, we have a gigabit LAN port. We have our HDMI 1, which is main, HDMI out 1. Then we have HDMI out 2, which is audio only. We have a USB 3.0. Then we have our digital audio out. We have a coaxial and optical. Next to that, we have our RS-232. And then next to that, we have our analog audio out, left and right. And then we have our power outlet and a power switch right below that. All right, so if we take a look at our Oppo UDP 203 versus the UDP 800, one thing that's already similar is the name of these players. So they both start with UDP and, you know, again, just makes me think more and more that the makers of the Oppo also had a hand in the Magnetar. Now both have brushed aluminum but we see some differences. So we have the Oppo logo up at top and then the power button is on the left on the bottom as opposed to on the right with the Magnetar. On the center, we both have an LCD screen followed by Ultra HD Blu-ray. However, those are reversed on the Oppo UDP 203. And then next to the tray on the Oppo, we have our eject button. And at the bottom, we also have another USB port on the front where you can connect some external storage. And then to the right of that, we see a very different orientation of our controls. So we have our play, pause, stop, skip back, skip forward. So let's take a look at the back and see the similarities. All right, so we can see on the back, we do have some, quite a few similarities with the Oppo, but there are some major differences. So on the Oppo UDP 203, we have our LAN port on the left same orientation as the UDP 800, the Magnetar. Then we also have an HDMI out main and the HDMI out audio. Next to that, we have another HDMI in. So you can use the Oppo's video processing. I don't know if you can do that with the 
UDP 800, the Magnetar, I don't see an HDMI in on that, so that's different. Next to the HDMI in on the Oppo, we have our optical and coaxial. And then we have two USB 3.0 ports to where you can add additional storage. So there's only one on the back of the Magnetar UDP 800. And then going back to the Oppo, we have our RS-232, and then we have two trigger ins. We have a trigger in and a trigger out. That's also not on the Magnetar. Now, one big difference on the Oppo UDP 203 that is not on the UDP 800, the Magnetar, is we have a 7.1, 5.1 stereo audio out. So if you do connect your system this way, you will not be able to get Bitstream audio, Dolby Atmos, DTSX. You will need to use your HDMI cable to get that Bitstream audio but that is a big difference on the Oppo versus the Magnetar. And then to the right, we have our power outlet. Now I will say that the UDP 205, the Oppo is probably a better comparison to the 800. However, I don't have that. All I have is the 203 and even the 205 is still gonna have some other options that the Magnetar UDP 800 will not have. So I'm gonna hook this up. I'm gonna hook both of these up. We're gonna take a look at the settings and options that we have and see how it compares between the two. All right, so when we boot up the UDP 800, this is what we get. And if this looks extremely familiar to you, it's because it is. Again, this looks exactly like the Oppo's home screen. Now the actual images are different, but it looks exactly the same. So. Again, I'm pretty sure the same people who made Oppo are the same people who are making this in some part. So we have our discs, we have our photos. If you wanna look at photos, you've got music, video, network, and settings. So if we go into our settings, again, this is exactly like Oppo. It doesn't just resemble it, it is exactly the same menu. So under, under display, you've got your TV screen that you can, you know, change from full screen to letterbox, a bunch of different options. You have TV system where you can change from NTSC to PAL. You have resolution, auto, source direct, and then you can change to a bunch of different resolutions. You have your HDR setting from auto, HDR, SDR, Dolby Vision mode, auto low latency, and then LLRGB. So low latency would be is if you're using like an HD Fury and you want the the player to do the Dolby Vision. So that's what I keep mine on, at least with the Oppo. And that's what I'll be using with the Dolby Vision mode on this one on the, on the Magnetar. And then you have your color space, deep color. You can change that from 10 bits to 12 bits or off. And then you have 3D. And then we have for audio, you can change your HDMI to Bitstream if you're using SPDIF. I don't know who's still using that, but you've got your Bitstream op options. You've got your max sampling frequency, DRC, SACD. If you're using this for SACD support, you can change the settings there. SACD priority, DVD audio mode, and then playback. You've got a bunch of different options in there. And then under network, you've got internet connection enable. You've got information, so it tells you next screen, connection test, IP address setting, you can change all that stuff. Security, you know, you can change your password or create a password, parental controls, different stuff like that. Language, obviously this is going to be English for most people. And then under option, you've got your screensaver, you can turn on or off, HDMI, CC, and then some other stuff you can update and stuff like that. So if we go back we go over to network you can pretty much connect to all of your movies and music content over the network so on my Plex server I have the DLNA server enabled and this is my Plex server here so I'll click on that and as you can see it looks it's the same as Oppo so it seems like Magnetar just used the same you know operating system whatever it's called settings for the Magnetar from the Oppo. So if we go into here to video, you can see these are all the same 
folders and categories that I have on my Plex server. Now I was messing with this earlier and I noticed that when I would click in HD, Ultra HD, I'm not gonna do it now because every time that I've clicked on there, it's frozen up on me. And I believe it's doing that because I have a very large library. The Apple doesn't do that. It does take a couple seconds for it to register and then all my content shows up. But whenever I click on HD and Ultra HD, it just, it freezes up and I have to turn off the, the, the Blu-ray player. And even then it takes a few minutes for it to, to, you know, actually turn off. So I don't think this interface is as smooth as the Oppo, but you know, if we go in here, I can see all, you know, this is basically just a, a file format over the network. You're not going to get any images. You're not going to get any album art or movie posters or anything like that. It's basically just going to show you your, your media by file. So if I was to go in here, all animated movies, and again, it may take a while or it may freeze up. So yeah, it it froze up on me right now. So I'm gonna have to restart this. Oh, no, actually it went through. So I believe if you have a pretty large library, it's probably gonna freeze up on you. I don't have that many movies in my animated movies compared to, you know, my, my Ultra HD. So that's just uh, something heads up. So if we click on Big Hero 6, it will take it takes about about a minute for the movie to start playing and this is the exact same function as the oppo as well again we'll look at the oppo here in a little bit and compare it but it does take about a minute sometimes this time it was actually a little bit quicker so you know the movie's playing and it plays plays pretty smooth now one thing i don't really care for when i select the display button on the oppo i believe it's info you get way more Info, information on your you know the track that's playing so this it doesn't seem like it, it shows as much but yeah it's 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 pretty smooth and it, it plays well so right now I have this hooked up to my capture card I don't have it in my my theater I will hook this up in my theater and I will be doing a you know a full video review of the, the product like I, I normally do but I just wanted to kind of give you guys it's easier for me to plug this up to my capture card and capture everything that's happening on the device so I'm gonna go ahead and stop that there because Disney is probably gonna hit me with the copyright strike but let's go ahead and look at the Oppo alright so now we are on the Oppo and yeah, it looks almost exactly the same. The only thing that's really different is the, the actual background images. So we have our discs, we have our music, photos, movies, network, setup. And I believe on this one you have favorites. This was not on the Magnetar. So we go to setup, exactly the same. And you know the, the menu may be set up a little bit differently, but it looks pretty much the actual layout looks exactly the same. So on the Oppo, we have our playback setup. We have our video output where you can adjust the picture settings, HDR, output resolution, custom resolution. It looks like there may be a little bit more options on the Oppo than the Magnetar. And then under audio output, we've got secondary audio, HDMI format, bitstream, pretty much the same, SACD, DVD, SACD, AV sync, maybe one or two more options on the Oppo. And then under audio processing, you've got output variable, power on volume last, maximum, dynamic range. I don't believe this menu was on the Magnetar. So this is a completely different you know, menu option that you get with the Oppo that you don't get with the Magnetar. And then under device setup, you've got firmware information, firmware upgrade. Again, more options on, on, on the Oppo than on the Magnetar. Quite a few more options on the Oppo. Okay, and then under network, we've got our network options so I'm actually not connected to the Ethernet right now I'm going to 
get that connected and then I will show you the DNA options. All right, so I'm connected to the internet and I'm on the network section on the Oppo. Now, one thing that you'll notice on the Oppo that you don't get on the Magnetar is you get this little logo for a Plex server. So on the Magnetar, it didn't even say, or it didn't even have a logo, it said Plex, but I think it had something else on the, you know, where it tells you what type of, I guess, server that it is. But that's a nice little added touch on the Oppo that you get, you get the little Plex logo. So when you click on that, I can go to video. And again, it looks exactly the same. And I'm gonna click on Ultra HD and my HD. These are where all my HD movies are. So if I click on that, it should only take a couple seconds. And yeah, so before on the Magnetar, this wouldn't even load. I would just get, you know, it would just freeze. Now it's not showing me anything in there right now for some reason. But if I were to go to let's go to by first letter and then click on B and so then it shows me my movies so for some reason whenever you click on all collection it just it's doesn't want to show me anything but again pretty much exactly the same now I will say that the Apple seems to be moving around a little bit smoother when I'm going in and out of, of menus and I'm you know selecting left or selecting right so it looks like the Oppo OS, even though it's probably exactly the same, like a copy of the same operating system, it seems like on the Oppo, it's a little bit smoother and you know, it's a little bit more polished. So that is a comparison to the Oppo and the, oh, let me go ahead and click on it on one of the videos so you can see, just to give you guys an idea. And we'll go to animated movies. We'll go to all animated movies. And you can see it goes to my movies a lot quicker than the Magnetar. So for some reason, it's a little bit slower on the Magnetar. And then if I click on Big Hero 6, we'll see how long it loads in comparison. So on the Magnetar, and this is something that's just minute, the percentage of it loading was on the right side. On the Oppo, it's on the left side. But it looks exactly the same. Yeah, so I'd say the... The Oppo loads about the same, you know, loads a movie over the network about the same as the Magnetar. There may be like a second difference, but I don't think that's going to make much of a difference to, to people. You know, sometimes it takes about a minute. Sometimes it could take less. It's probably going to depend on how big the file size is and what kind of codecs if you're doing like Dolby Atmos or DTSX. But Probably if the file size is, is bigger, a lot bigger, then it's going to take a little bit more than a minute. I've never seen anything load more than a minute, though. But yeah, I mean, both of these players are, are extremely similar. Obviously, the operating system is basically the exact same. They just changed a couple of things, and the Oppo has a little bit more options. So it makes me think that the Oppo is going to be a little bit better, you know, player as far as functionality and options and maybe even file playback now there are a couple of things that i want to see on the magnetar because there are a couple of issues and glitches on the oppo that i've noticed on file playback as well as on you know playing stuff over the network but i will notate that if i see an, an improvement or if it's the same but yeah again i'm gonna do a full video on the, the Magnetar, I'm going to be, you know, covering the disc playback, file playback, and, you know, playback over the network. So, and I'm also going to see why they have an asking price, why the asking price is so high, so much higher than not only the 203, but also the 205. So, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Make sure you hit the bell notification so you don't miss when I upload new videos. Thank you guys for watching and supporting the channel. I'll catch you guys in the next video.